Hi, my name is Jimmy Chamberlain. My interpretation of harmony uh, and rhythm is much more sophisticated than it was in, in 1988 or even before that. I mean, really, when I was when I joined the Pumpkins, I really was. I thought anything that really didn't have Tony Williams on it wasn't really even worth listening to, you know. I mean, it was like I was really that single-minded about that type of drumming. Luckily, I was able to find a vehicle in which I can insert my own version of that drumming and kind of get away with it, and, and people really responded to it. Was one. It got to be about kind of making the perfect recording, kind of really get into the studio wizardry, everything to a click track, and see if you can pull it off. And and then, you know, the complex was really just about free expression, and still is. It still is, you know, still exists, and is still kind of my baby. Sky Saw was really more of an attempt at a philosophy as a, as opposed to like I want to be a drummer in another band. It was more like can. Can, can I find people to write with that can write things that are sophisticated, that don't need to be bombastic, but still have a beauty about them? Nothing. For me, I mean, being able to write in a group like Sky Saw is fantastic. I mean, if this is really what I like. I don't want to go play like uh, some crazy flamacue intro and then go into the super groove, you know, because I just felt again like, are you going to do a better version of that? I mean, what's the point? Currently, uh, right now, I've just been recently commissioned by uh, Hubbard Street Dance to do a uh, program. The dancers are so good. What they do is so improvisational that I think uh, I'm going to try to make a band out of maybe four or five dancers and an ensemble, maybe a trio or a quartet. At any given time, there will be like this three-way interpretation going on where uh, the dance will be reacting from the music, uh, the music will be uh, informing the painting, uh, and then at some point the music would stop and the dancers might react to the paint or vice versa. With what's going on with technology and the way people are, are using their free space, there's room for people to interpret other things at the same time. One of the things that attracts me to technology is just the fact that it seems to be one of the cultural movements right now that's fearless. Where music was pushing the boundaries in the 90s, I think tech and companies like Groovebug are doing that. And I think the great thing about Groovebug is that there's a capability there to really go down a rabbit hole if you're into an artist. And my whole thing with them is like, why not in an ideal world have an artist talking about each record? Why not have a three minute video clip of Neil Young talking about Harvest, where people can go, oh man, I didn't know that song was about that. Now that we have the opportunity for people to just push a button and see your face talking about like a moment in time, why not use it and exploit it? And I think that's what I'd like to see happen with Groovebug. Well, one of the things I try to tell people is that, look, you know, it's not really about technique and 5-4. It's about taking what's in here and developing your facility to the point where you can bring it out on the drum set. And for some guys, it's very simplistic. I mean, for Charlie Watts, it's very simple. What's inside is a very simple message. He does a great job of bringing it out. He doesn't really need a lot to do that. It doesn't mean what he's saying is important. It's a lot of guys like Vinnie Kaliuta have a lot to say, and they say it very gracefully. People ask me about what I think they should do as far as selling their music and marketing and what the best channel is, and I just tell them, I think you should go write a better song so you don't have to sit around and try to be a marketing genius. You can just be a songwriter.